Hey, everybody. On behalf of PGSD, I would like to welcome you to Earth. Thank you for joining us for this presentation. We're so excited that you want to share these resources with your students. And we are we take pride in our district in pioneering some of these activities. This presentation is about Google Earth presentations. It's a new feature in Google Earth that was launched in November of last year. And after this presentation, we are hoping that you will decide on a learning outcome for your classroom and dive into this technology with your students to see what you can learn together. My name is Dr. Montgomery. I'm an art teacher at Trent Lott Academy, and I'm here to show you a couple of different ways I've used Google Earth in my classroom and hopefully give you some ideas on how you can use it in your classroom. I'm going to start with some basics of Google Earth. And you just saw the um, homepage for Google Earth on the web. There is one for mobile devices, and then there's one called Google Earth Pro, which I haven't used quite a bit, but I have Google Earth Pro down here in my toolbar so you can see what that icon looks like. I'm hoping to get into that version a little bit more. So I'm going to launch Google Earth and go over some of the basics, which you may or may not know all of the tips and tricks that are on that um, first page that you go to. If you've used Google Maps, some of those icons are the same. I am going to go ahead and do a search for Tretlot Academy, which is where I teach. And you can see now that they already say that you can add this to a project if you want to. But it goes down there. It's spinning because I have it in 3D mode to keep it from spinning. I can click on 2D. You can X out of that little box right there and go to Street View. When you click on the little Street View guy, you should see some blue lines start to pop up. I'm going to take you to the Street View at the front of my building. And it will zoom in. And that is the house across the street from my school. If I click on my mouse and drag the mouse around, which sometimes it gets a little tricky, it will allow me to move back and forth 360 degrees. So now you can see the front of my school. These little arrows down here on the bottom will allow you to go down the street. And back up the street, which you can see I'm clicking a little bit. It, it's running a little bit slow. And I know that this is a newer version of my street view because I can see our new gym right there. Now, if you ever get turned around when you're in street view and you want to orient yourself north, you can click on the compass and it will turn you north. And right here you can see Pascagoula Street. Um, you can zoom out and zoom back in using these arrow keys. Now you can also annotate on your map. So if you're talking and you want to draw while you're talking or erase, and you can see that there are some different options for drawing colors or just using your pointer, um, you can do, you can use all of those things. If you want to drop a pin to a location, You can title that. You can see that I have some projects already pulled up here. I do some work for the Walter Anderson Museum. But you can name that location and it will appear on your map. Now, some of these tools that you see over here, um, these could be used for math projects. But the cool thing about the distance is that it'll allow you to change 
your measurement in here. I like to do miles because if I want to see how many miles it is from here to here, I just click on those two points and you can see that was 0.4 miles and I'm done. It stays up there. If I want to start a new one, it'll let me start over, which if you want to do some measurement activities with your students, that's a great way to do that. Now, if you want to clean up your map or customize your map in any way, you're going to click on these layers. I have 3D buildings turned on so that I can go into 3D view. You can turn on animated clouds. So if you wanted to see, if you have it zoomed way out and you wanted to see the clouds for the past 24 hours in looping animation, that is on. And of course, you can see down here that you can turn on your grid lines. So you can customize your map. This is how you start a project. I'm going to go back to that one. That one, that button is called I'm feeling lucky and it will take you to different places around the globe and zoom in. And then of course you can um, play around with the street view and 2D, 3D areas. This has got a Wikipedia uh, description over here and a photo of that area. Some teachers I know, have, um, depending on what classes you're teaching, have used that for a warm up. Voyager is a, another really cool feature that has a bunch of Google Slides presentations already incorporated. You can see that there are games, um, layers, street views, natures, whatever your mind can possibly imagine will pull up under. You can find probably something for almost any lesson We'll pull up under here. Um, one of the games that I see frequently mentioned when I'm doing research on Google Earth is this game right here. We're on Google Earth is Carmen San Diego. Um, it's just amazing some of the places that they'll take you. And you never have to leave your classroom. So up here, just very quickly, if you go to settings and you're seeing that or feeling that you're getting kind of dizzy when when you're using Google Earth, you can adjust your settings. If Google Earth is a little bit too slow for you, you can increase um, how quickly everything's loading, but it might require that you have an updated computer to do those things. Or you can just hit reset. So you can also um, personalize everything in the settings on Google Earth. So one other thing I wanted to go tell you about really quickly is if you don't know about time lapse in Google Earth, uh, the way Google Earth works is it uses aerial data, satellite data, and street views to kind of, and combines all of those things to create this data. And it will time lapse all of these different things from urban growth to mining to watching the movements or retreat of glaciers. So there are a lot of educational opportunities with this Google Earth time lapse. Google Earth also, I'm going to find my slide here. Google Earth also will take you underwater. And I have included this in a little handout that I've attached to this presentation. But when you get in here, you can you can dive around underwater and and see some of the beautiful sights beneath the ocean in 360 view. And you can hit the arrows, of course, and move around a little bit more than that. Um, Nat Geo has a bunch of lessons on Google Earth. You can go to Mars on Google Earth. You can go to the moon on Google Earth. You can see the moon in 3D on Google Earth. Um, Google Earth also has an education site where 
they provide numerous resources as to how to use Google Earth and create presentations. So going back to Google Earth projects, one of the projects that I did with Google Earth before they had presentation mode was I took my students using Google websites and this is the new version of Google websites. I took them on a virtual tour of their middle school so they could check out that area and put Google Forms in the site next to it so they could do a little scavenger hunt and I would know that whether or not they actually looked around for those things. That's one way that I've used it in my classroom. And another way that I've used it is um, with the Walter Anderson Museum. If you know anything about the life of Walter Anderson, an artist on the coast in Ocean Springs, you will know that he was a wanderlust. He traveled everywhere. And I created a presentation so you can see a little bit about how it works of one of his adventures where he decided to just pack up and go to China. And this is done entirely in Google Slides or in Google Earth, rather. It allows you to insert slides. And as you advance through the slides, it will take you to the different locations and information that you provide as part of your presentation. And I'm going to go through that. You can see that I've inserted some photos of Walter Anderson. Um, his bicycle, which was one of his favorite modes of transportation. There is a street view of his cottage, so you can customize the view that zooms in. It's, it's really amazing once you get started. These are just some quick ideas on how you can use a Google Earth presentation in your classroom. You might preview a field trip. You might use it for measurement and math. You could show a FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, Meet speaker, um, and maybe show the kids where they're presenting from. Introducing a cultural activity. I love to use this when I'm talking about making sugar skulls in the fall. Create a scavenger hunt or tour using integrated photos. Some of the teachers at my school use CNN 10, and a lot of times, they talk about different parts of the world and you could perhaps pull up where they're talking about that day. Um, and I've seen some teachers do some really cool things with not just Google Earth, but Google Maps, where at the beginning of the year, you might map out where you or your students collectively went over summer vacation. At the end of the year, I've seen them map out the, their dream summer vacation, and a couple of parents actually took them on their dream summer vacation. Now I'm going to show you a really quick way to get started with making the Google projects. And you go over here and you click this little button, create your new project. I like to create mine in Google Drive. Down here, these uh, KML files will let you download it to your, com your computer's hard drive. And then you have to upload a KML file viewer in order to open it back up. But that's one way, you know, if you prefer to do it that way, um, you know, you can bring it from computer to computer with a jump drive. Otherwise, you can open it through Google wherever you go if you log in to your account. So I'm going to create it in Google Drive. And I'm going to title my project Google Earth PLA, which is Trent Lott Academy. And I'm going to add a description, a great place to be. And now I'm going to go down here and search to add a place. And you can see that in my recent searches. It is going to take me to Trent Lott Academy. Now it's spinning. And one of the reasons it's spinning is because it's in 3D mode. So if we put it back in 2D and I get my little guy 
to bring me to street view, I want to go to the front of the building. I'm going to zoom into the front of the building. Again, I'm looking at the house across the street, so I'm going to spin it to the front of the building and possibly move it down a little bit sideways. I'm going to capture this view and label it so that it goes to this view instead of across the street. And you can see which project I want to add it to. So I'm going to add it to this project. So now I have the front of TLA. Now I'm going to edit, go back to edit this slide for a second here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to show you how to customize that place mark, but you have to get out far enough so the place mark appears. I can go down here and I can change it to that little person walking. There are more icons that you can look for. There's tons of icons on here. You can change the color of your icon or something really cool you can do is you can upload a custom icon. And I'm going to do that. Put a little panther paw on there. You can see that it marks the front of TLA. You can change the size of your icon. I'm going to put it back to default. And then the other thing you can do, I'm going to preview the presentation again so you can see what I'm talking about. It's going to zoom into the view I gave it. When you have this little information box pop up, you can change the looks of this information box by adding pictures and you can even add, I believe, videos. I have some pictures that I'm going to put in that little slideshow over there. And you'll see that once you do that, it'll allow you to add multiple pictures. taking these off my device. And then the last picture I'm going to put up here is a funny picture of my amazing, wonderful principal, Dr. Smirthwaite. And then down here in the little description box, I am going to insert our mission statement. And I'm going to insert a link to a video of our kiddos that you can find on Facebook. Copy link. I'm going to paste that link in there. And you'll see that at the bottom. Now you can make this info box over here. You can make it large, small, or it says you can change it so that you don't have an info box. I'm going to turn mine into a large info box. And those are pretty much the features that I use when I go to a location. And we can preview what I did here. Now you can see those pictures are showing up in the info box. So if for some reason this is taking a little bit of time to load and you have it whole group, you can go through the information box, look at this, maybe even pop up the video while this is trying to load, which I'm not sure if that would slow it down, but, but that's an option. So I'm going to go back to my presentation and I'm going to show you one more feature that I use. full screen slide. Now on the full screen slide, you can do just a basic slide with a title. And you can see that, you know, you can enlarge the font, you can italicize the font. 
There aren't a lot of font selections in here, but instead of changing the background to a color, you can um, create your own slide with your own fonts in something like Canva or Google Drawing and upload that as a JPEG in here and have a custom slide made and ready to go. And now if we preview the presentation, that is what the full screen slide looks like. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that I've inspired you to at least give Google Earth a shot in your classroom. There are so many possibilities when using this program. If you have any questions, you can contact me by email. And I also have a little sheet that I've attached to this presentation that will give you even more information on some of the things that you saw in this video. Appreciate it. Thank you.